All right. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Friday. Right before the long weekend here, as always, Rex Kehoe alongside Patrick Crowley. Got a pretty fun topic here today. What is it? Well, we'll get into it here in a second. But first, we, have to, at the we don't we don't have the PowerPoint, so we got to remember this is deep dive number sixty five. Wow! Go I'm, there. I'm asking. you. Oh no, I don't keep track. <laughs> I get surprised every week. You should know that by now. Sixty five, I believe it is. So today we are going to be talking about um, a couple of inverter products, specifically Solar Edge and Enphase. Mm, the two big guys. Two big guys, very popular. If you're doing any looking into solar, you've most likely come across. Uh, these two names, so we're going to go into it and tell you which one's better, or are they? They're pretty much the same. <laughs> we'll find out. Yes. Yeah, so a couple of a couple of points that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first being the functionality of these microinverters and Solar Edge, which is actually kind of a hybrid uh, combination. There. So tell us a little bit about how Enphase works, and maybe I'll go into how Solar Edge works. Sure. So Enphase traditional microinverter. Yep. Converting your energy from DC to AC on the roof. Um, string inverter, if you'll go into, yep. that doesn't happen on the roof. Correct. Um, and so what the microinverter does, and traditionally why it's you know so popular, is it isolates the power produced at the, le at the panel level. Uh, so you're able to capture the maximum output for each panel at all times. So if half the array is shaded and the other half is not, you're yep. going to get maximum production out of each individual one of those panels under its each individual panel circumstance right. at all times. And like the best analogy that I think is is the Christmas light scenario. So yeah. if one Christmas light went out, usually that whole string goes out, the end phase microinverters, that does not happen. Right. Yeah. So the yeah, not every panel will be reduced to the lowest performing panel, which is, you know, Solar Edge is a hybrid inverter, so it yeah. avoids that. But traditional string inverters like SMA, yep. you can't avoid that. If one panel is shaded, all the panels production will be lower. Yeah, uh, SMA, another product we're not talking about today. That's, I'd say, the third most popular inverter. Right, strictly a string inverter. It's fine if you have yeah. no shading issues in one array. Yeah, uh, it's just not as versatile as these other two, right. which is why we like these two. Yeah, uh, especially since the costs have come down and they're really comparable with SMA. For sure. Um, but in so, any case, microinverters, you're going to have one on the back of each panel. Yep. Yeah, and point. it's going to convert the energy AC to DC. You're going to have a junction box by about yay big. How's that look on the screen? Yep. yep. Yay big. Um, on the wall near near your panel box, right, and that will be the only hardware that isn't on your roof. Yep, uh, and so that's that's the microverter in a nutshell. Perfect. So in end phase as well, that's right? Yes, and so Solar Edge um, hmm. differences of Solar Edge and end phase in terms of the functionality and kind of the hardware. Um, instead of having a microinverter under each solar panel, you have what's called an optimizer hmm. under each solar panel. So it still solves that whole Christmas light scenario where, you know, if one panel is not producing as high, all the others will still produce efficiently. So it solves that aspect of it. Um, the difference is that it's not actually converting the electricity from DC to AC up on the roof. Right. So it allows each panel to operate independent for another, but it still all funnels down into a central inverter. So that's where that uh, AC, I'm sorry, yeah. that DC to AC conversion happens through the central inverter. And there is an extra piece of hardware with Solar Edge. So um, you would essentially have a little bit, a little bit larger than what your, yeah, uh, yeah. your, your right. Right. yeah, a couple it's of shoe right. boxes is yeah. kind of a good analogy of how big the Solar Edge inverter is. So you would have that um, on the side of your home, usually near the, the main service panel. Um, and then you have these individual optimizers up on the roof under each panel. Yeah, so just to kind of hammer this home, the optimizers isolate the DC energy at the panel level, allowing you to capture all of that. The conversion will take place at the inverter. Microinverters do the same thing, except they're converting it on the roof. So you're still isolating the power produced at the panel level, which yeah. is really what we look for yeah. to be and able to maximize the output of your system. For sure. And that's why if you look at an efficiency standpoint, they're virtually exactly the same. Virtually so identical, yeah. Great, great products. Both are, are excellent choices in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's functionality. Monitoring. So there are some slight differences with the monitoring, but again, not, not that much. Uh, because it, these inverters allow and optimizers allow each panel to operate um, independent from one another, when you're on your monitoring system, so on your cell phone or your you know, web browser, whatever that may be, you can see you know, what each panel is actually producing. Yeah, it is really cool. It is. Quite frankly. <laughs> it's pretty and, awesome. You know, what we get a lot of times is... Uh, you know, a homeowner will reach out to us, you know, 
six months, a year, two years, however long down the line to check in on their solar system. Maybe it's not getting the savings they want, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. It's very easy for us to diagnose. We go into the Solar Edge platform. We can see day by day, even hour by hour, yep. the kilowatt hours that are being produced. We compare that to our original assumptions, let the homeowner know if there's anything wrong. Maybe they're using more energy than they used to. That's really the most common one. Maybe a tree grew a little bit more from when it was installed. Yeah, or there's some faulty hardware. Yeah. And you're able to find that. Right. You, know, you can see literally the panel, what it's producing. And if you see four panels in a, in a, in a row and one of the ones in the middle has right. zero on it, right. something's wrong with the hardware. Which is good for an installer as well. Right. Because if it's just a string inverter, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where that problem is. With right. these optimistic microinverters, it's super easy to troubleshoot. They go out there, they spend less time roof. You're gonna get, you're gonna pay less because it's less time on them, mm -hmm. and they can just replace that one inverter optimizer very quickly. Right. Yeah. And um, and end phase. You want to talk a little bit about the end phase? Model? Yeah. So just slight, the the slight difference that I mentioned was um, Solar Edge comes standard with this panel level monitoring that we've been talking about. End phase, you do have to upgrade your subscription. It's only $250, not only. I mean, it's $250, so there is some cost there. Um, in the grand scheme of things, you know, when you're looking at, at a whole solar project, it doesn't tend to be a no. significant cost. Um, but the only difference is it doesn't come standard. You do have to upgrade the service there. Yeah, and some it's – but with, still the, the installer will be able to tell if it's which. Yes. That's just for the – that's an important distinction. Yep. So you don't need to upgrade it for your installer to know which one is failing. That's true. Um, some people just like to know that. And it's, yeah. It's, I would. Yeah. And in, 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 in the Solar Edge one, um, depending on what kind of setup you have, you can also have consumption monitoring. That's true. So you can see yep. what you're producing versus what you're using, panel level. And so it can be really detailed if you want it right. to be. Yep. Uh, so some people like that. But yeah. you're, it, to answer the question of if something's wrong, how do I figure it out? Both of them, you can isolate the they problem. They both have the well. capability. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure. Just not necessarily on that monitoring dashboard for the homeowner right. unless you upgrade. Yep. Uh, next topic on these two inverters, we want to talk about warranties. So, Enphase. Yes, 25 years. 25 years. So, that's standard. All yep. Enphase microverters, they do come with a 25-year manufacturer's warranty. Yeah, and that will match your panel. That's the most important part yep. to the same. So, your panel is going to have a 25-year warranty. Mm -hmm. We like to see your inverter have the same warranty as well so that you know, you're, if one thing fails, right. you're covered no matter what, fits. absolutely. You know, you yeah. don't want to have a situation where your panels are working, but your microinverter doesn't have a warranty on. It. Right. You know, absolutely. You're, you're out of luck. Yeah. And then Solar Edge, the standard Solar Edge warranty, it is 12 years, but there is the option to upgrade it, which most, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of homeowners do um, elect to either extend it to the 20 year um, warranty, or you can go up to 25 and kind of match that end phase warranty there. Yeah. We see a lot of 25 on our platform. Yep just because of what, what I mentioned before. Right. We want to make sure you're covered door to door. For sure. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people prefer that. It's just a little peace of mind and, and, it, and yeah. it's still very, very cost competitive. For sure. And I mean, on our platform, <laughs> at least, I know a fair amount of the installers usually just include the 25 year. Yeah. I mean, it's warranty. a great, it's a, it's a, it's a good feature. You're right. talking about a selling point, you know, if you yeah. have a 12 year warranty on the table and you have a 25 year warranty on the table. Yep. If everything else is equal, you're going to go with the 25. Right. And so to be competitive on a marketplace. For sure. That's a lot of people do. Yep. Right. So warranties are only as good as, you know, the companies that back them. So a little bit about the bankability of these two companies. Mm. Um, they're both great companies. They're both public companies. Publicly um, traded. Publicly traded companies, yeah. yes. Um, Solar Edge, again, they're, they're both very bankable companies. Solar Edge has um, had more profitability, from mm -hmm. my knowledge, than yeah. Enphase has. Um, so you do have that. But also Enphase has some pretty awesome uh, products that they will be coming out with that I really think is going to kind of move the needle a little bit on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, what you're alluding to is just kind of like stock reliability and bankability yep. in that respect. Um, Enphase truthfully had trailed behind Solar Edge. Mm -hmm. That's a, a fair thing to say, I think. Um, when we look at, when we compare them, you look at the future for Enphase and AC modules becoming a lot more popular, yep. integrated with Solaria, integrated with uh, sun, power. sun power, which is right. huge because sun power is cream to, of the crop. To touch on that, uh, Enphase actually acquired Sun Power's um, microinverter, previous microinverter manufacturer. So you're talking about bankability. I mean, Enphase is associated with Sun Power right. and Solaria, which are two very, you know, very popular models, especially Sun Power. Yeah, and so we, we monitor these trends in the industry. I don't think the string inverter 
especially the solar edge, is going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there will be a greater adoption towards built-in microinverters. The integrated microinverters. Just because yeah. then you just have one product. Right. You're not really dealing with multiple products. And, you know, SunPower is obviously leading the, leading the charge right. there. Uh, but I do think that that will start to be more, more of the norm. More of the norm. And yeah. Enphase will probably lead the charge because they're the best microinverter. On the right. Market. So I yeah. don't think Enphase is going, going anywhere either. Right. For sure. So that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Those are the basic, you know, topics we wanted to go over in terms of those two products. But I mean, in a nutshell, they're both great products. They're both extremely efficient products. If you're making a decision right now between solar and phase, you really can't go wrong, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's a matter of preference. Yeah, it's a matter of preference. And, and the one last thing that I do want to say on this is we do get customers that come to us and say, I've had a previous installer coming. Yeah. One of my big pet peeves. I'm right. sorry, I got to throw it in there. Yeah. I've had an installer say, I need microinverters. Right. And they won't consider Solar Edge. Right. And part of the beauty of our platform is we can gather bids from Solar Edge, micro, uh, Enphase, right. SMA. What often happens with people who have Enphase is they have a microinverter with Enphase and then they have a string inverter, SMA. Mm -hmm. In a case where you're shaded, absolutely, you want Enphase over SMA. Yeah. But if Solar Edge were also on the table, it's just as good of an option. Right. So don't limit yourself. Know that you can have both options, Solar Edge. And phase usually, usually good. very same, you yeah, know, similar if not the same price as well. So. Drives me up a wall. Sorry, <laughs> appreciate my rant. That's all I got. <laughs> all right, everybody, have a great holiday weekend, and we will see you guys next week.